Good afternoon to everyone. This is Miriam Ayur. I'm the materials and packaging area manager from Itene, the Packaging, Transport and Logistics Research Institute located in Valencia, Spain. And I'm, an, I'm also the coordinator of CILI project, the European project that I will explain now to all of you. What we do in Sea Life, uh, I will explain how we boost the use of biomaterials and catenate technologies to produce bioplastic market solutions. Okay, this is the outline of my presentation. I will try to express to explain you what was our motivation to create this project, our objectives, how we will apply it in the market, and how we will implement it. And of course, who are we, the consortium? Okay, so uh, to start, uh, it is well known that plastic is an important and ubiquitous material in our daily lives. It has multiple infections and brings multiple benefits to our society, like safety, hygiene, comfort and well-being. Today, the resource-efficient plastics are present in an infinitive range of products and applications, helping us to reduce CO2 emissions, to save energy, to save water and to maintain the food. Here you can see some of the different applications where we can find plastic, like building and constructions, automotive, electric and electronic, packaging, households and agriculture, among others. Okay, so, but uh, this is okay, and the, uh, the production figures is, are really amazing. Uh, in 2018, the global plastic production almost reached more than uh, 359 million tons, and only in Europe will reach almost 62 million tons. And not all the plastic that we produce ends in an effective way. I mean that it's a reality that plastic waste is increasing year by year. If you look at this picture in purple color, you can see the amount of plastic litter that has been accumulated in our countries and sea. It should be caused by a responsible behavior or poor waste management practice. And this is what we call the unintended impacts of plastics. Okay, uh, it is true that thanks to the increasing landfills restrictions put in place in the European member states and to continuous efforts of the world value chain to put adequate systems in place to recover the plastic products and the end of their lives, the quantity of plastics of the quantity of plastic waste sent to the landfills have been decreased by 44 percent since 2006 and 2018. So this is a good news, but it's not sufficient because in 2018, more than 7.2 million tons of plastic waste were still sent to landfills. So the increase of plastic pollution and plastic contamination is, is increasing and causing uh, several effects, not only in the environment, that maybe is the, the most um, short-term effect that we are now looking in, in all the pictures, in the TV and so on. All of us uh, know about the marine and terrestrial litter in our rivers, the ocean, lands, the plastic island and, and so on. But it's, um, it's, it's most critical the evidence that the plastic weight is not only affecting the environment, it's also affecting the human health. This is the, the thing that we could see in the future, we will see in the long term effects. Like, for example, the microplastics. The microplastics enter in the food chain, causing some types of cancers, also immune infections and other health issues. So this is something that we have to, to solve. And uh, because 
um, not only because of the, the human health and the environment, because the plastic waste, it is necessary to use it like a resource and it's key to becoming more resource efficient because plastic materials at the end of their service life are still too valuable to be simply thrown away. So, um, because of this, uh, the European Commission started to act in the past. In January of 2018, the European Union has reacted with a vision for more sustainable packaging, not only packaging, plastic industry, adopting the world's first compressive compressing approach, namely European strategy for plastics in a circular economy, which states that 100% of the plastic should either be reusable, recyclable or composting by 2013. Okay, following this in January of 2018, in May of 2018, the European Commission proposed new laws to tackle the 10 most found plastic waste items on Europe's beaches. Uh, here in this picture, you can see the list of these of these plastic items that usually found in our beaches, like single-use cutlery, plastic bottle, or fishing gear. And this is the main aim of Sea Life. Uh, in line with this, the European blow, the European blue growth strategy create the topic where sea life project was granted and because of that uh, the sea life strategy should be or is to boost advanced bio-based solution to manufacture this type of plastic items in a more environmental friendly materials to reduce the plastic pollutions so let's go to the project sea life sea life a uh, complete title means strategies of circular economy and advanced bio-based solutions to keep our lands and seas alive from plastic contamination. It's an innovation action, as I said, was granted by the European Union Horizon 2020, has a duration of 48 months. Uh, the coordinator is Itene, and we are 24 partners plus five linked third parties, and we are from 13 different countries and the total budget for this project is more than 10 million euros. So what is the challenge of sea life? Sea life intends to reduce the plastic waste and contamination on land and seas. But how? How we will do it following a general objective? The general objective is to develop innovative and sustainable business models to put in the market advanced bio-based plastic solution by combining new polymers together with cutting aid processing technologies, offering unexploited opportunities for a circular economy solution involving the design for circularity techniques. So uh, what does design for circularity techniques means? It means that we will create or we will develop a specific solutions for each of the end of life of the each product that we will develop inside the consortium, inside the project. It means we will develop a product that maybe is the better end of life for this is the recycle or the reusability, but we will also develop products in which the best end of life will be the marine biodegradation or the home composting or the industrial compost. Uh, also, uh, we will build up a strong reference framework for the policy makers and the harmonization in order to be sure that we will reach the market and we will reach all the society. So, going to the specific objective, the first one. The first one is to select uh, alternative sources for producing sustainable biomass. For example, in this period, we will use uh, photosynthetic aquatic biomass, like it's the micro uh, organic waste coming from agricultural byproducts and wastewater, uh, together with new chemistry routes 
to produce new advanced bioplastic materials like the polylactic acid, polyhydroxyalkanoates, starch and other novelments. And all of them we will ready to up a scale. Here in the picture you can see one of the reactors for upscaling the starch from the algae. Okay. The second objective is uh, to produce the innovative bioplastic materials by their formulation and by incorporating different additives to improve the current properties in terms of mechanical, barrier, thermal or other requirements compared to the current bioplastic solutions. Why not only uh, using the formulation we will reach our objectives, we will go ahead together with high performance or cutting edge processing technologies with advanced compounding and elongation flow mixing technologies we will try to reach market demands in terms of technical and also from an economical point of view and also we will apply the recycling by design techniques to ensure the proper management of the products after its end of life it means also uh, to adapt the plastic to their real or actual use. It means if we could produce a uh, single use plastic using a uh, mono material, we will avoid a composite material. In order to uh, to increase the, the, man, the effectivity of the management of the end of life, we will also work on that by developing high end sorting technologies first to avoid cross contamination of bioplastic with the current conventional polymers, increasing the detection level of the infrared detectors and also developing new natural coming from biomass polymer makers. This is one side for the sorting as you can see here in the left side of the picture and also we will work in improving materials to reach the composting and the marine biodegradability, of course, composting in soil, marine uh, biodegradability in, uh, in seas, but uh, adapted with the real time, the real temperatures and so on. To develop, a, um, not to develop, a, to put a, in our real thing this a, Products that we will develop, we select eight uses cases. Okay, these uses cases that you can see here in this slide, they are recyclable food packaging, compostable melting films, single use plastic culture, biodegradable flexible food films, and uh, corresponding to the land, biodegradable deep frozen films, biodegradable oyster mess bags, reusable and recyclable fish crates and reusable and recyclable fishing need. And why these uh, eight applications? Okay, the consortium have chosen uh, this application because we think that are the most representative products which provokes contamination due to a high volume consumption or uh, due to waste management bad practice. So there are some applications that you usually use and cool and up in the bit and in the land for in the land for example the uh, the rest of the mulching films for agricultural uh, markets and also products that are easily used in outdoor and ambients in outdoor ambients at that maybe cool finish in our seas like for example the fishing gears and for example the crates that the ships are using in in the oceans. Okay, but we will not only produce the demonstrators and testing in a laboratory. Uh, we will test in in real environments. Uh, because of that, uh, we have been choose six different real uh, environments, six different territories to carry out these real trials to land. Uh, based sites uh, for assessing the sorting of current uh, plastic waste streams and uh, like for example here one of them will be Urbacebra, a company uh, of Spain 
and a pilot scale composting testing uh, that will be in Belgium by the company OPS. And uh, four marine sites. Uh, the marine sites uh, have been selected because of their complementarity and criticality. It is not the same the temperature of the Mediterranean Sea than the temperature of the Celtic Sea. Because of that, we will select four demonstrator sites very different. One we will carry out but Isotec in Cyprus, where we will test it. There are uh, we will test it, the biodegradable uh, fishing yards in Patagonian Sea with Iberconsan. We will uh, we will use the fishing nets developed by Citadini. Also, we will test in the Atlantic Ocean the oyster, oh, sorry, the oyster mex bags, and we will test their functionality. And finally, in the Celtic Sea, we will use the fishing craze developed by SP Werner and distribute for uh, several manufacturers and local users. Finally, uh, to carry out the uh, to carry out the, the implementation and uh, to guarantee the adoption of the innovation and the strategies defined within Sea Life projects, uh, we will uh, taking care about the policy. OK, policy recommendations. We will try to create the different recommendations for different uh, to create a framework for the different recommendations for policymakers. And also we will work in proposing new standards for biodegradability and, compost and compostability based on the prenormative studies performed by the relevant partners in the file, like OBS and also ETN. Uh, trying to be close to the real composting plants that we see in uh, in the different European and worldwide countries. And of course, we will work in the dissemination and also in promoting the use of these new solutions, not only by the plastic industry, uh, that uh, we are very, we are a lot of partners into the consortium uh, that represent the plastic industry, but also with the consumers, with the fishermen association and other uh, type of different uh, focus group with also with packaging consumers and so on. So um, if you can see uh, sea life is not a typical uh, linear uh, R&D project. It's more like a circular concept because we will start from the raw materials looking for more sustainable biomass sources compared with the current ones. We will work in the material design always together with the product design of, with the cutting eye processing technologies but with the aim, the aim of validate the use together with the end of life. So we will start in the raw materials, we will finish in the end of life and we will make all the different business models to be sure that we are creating a circular loops, a circular loops for policy making, standardization and so on. Hey, uh, to do that, uh, we have a great consortium, an amazing consortium where uh, all of different companies are very well represented. Uh, we are 24 partners from, as I said before, with from uh, 13 uh, different countries. And uh, in this consortium, there are the representing different type of organizations, small companies, uh, big industry, the academy, the research technological centers and non-profit organizations. OK, so um, I, I have to see that uh, to say that thank you so much for attending this uh, talk. Thank you. Very thanks to the organization for inviting me and inviting the Sea Life project here in this amazing Congress, Confer Plastic Free World Conference. And thank you so much. If you have any question, I will be happy to attend all of these questions. OK. So thank you so much.